All right, Chase. Hi, Chase. Hi, Chase. Hi, Professor. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, anything you need to uh, need to talk about? Um, I remember there was one thing from the homework. Okay. Um. Okay, so is there any instance where you would use a uh, like naming like BAO, barium oxide? Or, no, not that, no. So it'd be like BF3, so it'd be a uh, boron tri trifluoride. Okay. Would there be any instance where you would put a prefix in front of a boron? Okay, no, because uh, boron has, in that instance, it has only one, one uh, uh, boron atom. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rules say that when you're looking at the uh, uh, first non-metal, when you're dealing with a covalent, if, it, if there's only one there, then you don't put a prefix. Okay, and then there was a problem, it asked, I, I'm I'm pulling it up now. Okay. This is homework four. Uh, yes, this was the one that was due today. Okay. I need to do good on this test because the last one did not do so well. I didn't do that bad. They're pretty bad. No, I. Well, I failed it. <laughs> oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh trying to, no, it's not money. There we go. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chase. Uh, yeah, you're right, I'm wrong. <laughs> we will, we will get this. Is this the, no, there it is. Okay. Where is it at? Where's homework? For? Oh, okay. Do you know which question it was, Chase? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was closer to the bottom. Okay. Where are the questions? Closer to the bottom, okay. Was it a multiple choice? Was it a quick question? Yeah, it was a multiple choice. Uh, do you know what it involved? It was um, just adding uh, the okay. atom. So there was a question, it was like NH4C2, three hydrogen, two oxygen. It said like how many atoms were in, were in each. It's kind of. Uh, I got the BF3 one. I've got a correct name of the compound whose formula is N2O4. Um, yeah, I don't remember what question it was exactly. But you say it was down at the bottom. I've looked at all those questions. Hmm. Uh, you say it's something about how many atoms? Yeah.
I yeah, I don't know what to tell you, Chase. I'm not seeing anything like that. Uh, well, I was I was just kind of confused because I haven't seen it before, and it just seems like you added them. So I don't really think it's a dire question. Okay, that one was a simple multiple choice question. I think so. I, I'm at a loss here, Chase. I don't know what to tell you. I really, I'm looking. I, are you seeing these questions as I pop up? No. You're not saying. I should have the screen shared right now. Well, I, I can see like the item types and stuff, but you, you, uh, like for example, this question here is the last question. You're not seeing. No. What's the correct name of the formula? You're not seeing that at all? No. Hmm. Find it, find it, Chase. And uh, if you find it, I'll be able to, I'll, I'll, hopefully I'll be able to figure it out for you. All right. Sorry. Anybody else, guys, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. I don't know if you want over this or not. I'm here. I'm here, Zaina. So I'm I was taking quiz eight right now and question nine and 10 don't have any answer choices. Okay. Let's see what I wanted for those. Let's go out of here. Uh -huh, go out of here. Okay, quiz eight. You still there, Zana? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Okay, I'm looking at, are you seeing what I'm seeing right now? Yeah, I see your screen. This is, this looks like the next to last question and it does have answers. There's not question number 10, it has answers. Uh, Zaina, I don't know what to tell you. I can go, I can look at your quest. I can look at your quiz specifically with your permission. It's open right now. I'm not sure if that matters or not. Huh? Am I looking? What in the world? It says there are no attempts. We're talking quiz eight, right? Yeah. Zaina, I'm yeah. showing, but this one's not due until Thursday, okay? Okay. And I'm not showing any, I'm not, I'm not showing any attempts yet. Are you see, seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you submitted your quiz eight yet? It's open on my screen right now. If it's open on your screen, then you haven't submitted it. I can't see it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I can't see it until you submit that. Okay. And when I looked at it, I saw some, I saw answers for the multiple choice there. The last two okay. questions at least. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Anybody have anything else? Um, I just had a quick question about the homework, not the content or anything, but um, 
I start, I finished it today, but there's like something in the corner that says partial credit for late work. Um, does that not really, is that not something I should worry about? Yeah, you should probably. Let me see what it, let me see what I did here. I may have done something stupid like put the wrong date on it. Okay, come on, come on, come on. While we're waiting, anybody have anything else? Come on. Should have said something a few seconds ago, Faith, I had it loaded up. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, Alex here, two people. I do not know why this is not loading up. There we go. When did you, Faith, when did you finish it? Today. What time? Uh, before noon. Okay, I'm showing homework four is due, due time today at 5.30. Okay, so I guess I don't really have to worry then. Uh, Let me see. Okay. All right. So, um, sorry, this is Faith, right? Yep. Okay, Faith, I'm showing. You got, I'm looking at 100%. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, that's for how much you completed. All right, so you got a 96.13. Yeah, that's what I saw when I completed all the work. Um, but before are you I... Saying, are you seeing this little thing here, not included in the score until 530? No, when I first opened the assignment before doing any of the questions, there was like a little text box uh, at the top of the screen that said uh, partial credit due to late work or something like that. It could have just oh, based that that says it on every assignment. I oh. think it's just like letting people know just in case. Oh, OK. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, OK, I, I learned something then, too. I don't get to see your screens like you guys do. Okay. So anything else, ladies and gentlemen? We're all good with nomenclature, right? Okay, let me show you a couple things. If I can get to this, have I shown you what to what to expect from the uh, from the laboratory regarding nomenclature? Have I shown you guys that yet? It's like 120 questions on nomenclature. You showed the Tuesday lab class, but I don't know if you showed the actual lecture classes. I think you showed the lecture. It was like a few hundred questions on the. Um, it's very yeah. the. the that is, you're going to get practice doing that. You will definitely get practice there. Uh, also, if you want it. Is this what I'm, this is where I want to be? Yeah, this is where I want to be. 
if you want it, you guys, you are going to need to do something. The uh, backside of the survivor guide, the survivor guide has all kinds of, of uh, nomenclature work in it. There's also a, if you go into the course, you are seeing this now, guys. The extra homework. Hey, how's it going? PHK, wonderful. Okay, are you seeing this, guys? Yep. Yes. Bunches and bunches of formulas and names. Okay. And it has the answers there. So if you want extra practice doing this, I would definitely you avail yourself of this. Gonna be? What's that? When is test two? Uh, test two is, it is going to be March 2nd. Okay. Is there any way um, I can take it on like a Saturday or Sunday? Uh, why? Um, just so I can have my kids babysat. Uh, I'm sorry, I know that's it's the same. Mila, let me, let me see what I can do, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me see what I can do. It is There's getting- all sorts of animals out here today. Guys, there, Mila, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Yes, sir. Uh, at the, on the 10th, I go in for my surgery. That's in the middle of your spring break. Okay. So remind me, email me, Milo, okay, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, just email I, me. I'll email you, I'm sorry. Okay, anything else, ladies and gentlemen? I, I feel like I haven't done a thing solving any problems here. Other people have done things like say that there's a pop-up window on there. I don't feel like I've been doing anything pos uh, positive for y'all. Are we okay? We understand what's going on here. Yes. All right, wonderful. Okay, while I have this up here, I'm going to stop sharing this. And I am going to. Are you going to go over that um, extra credit problem? Uh, basically, real quick, Mila, real quick, the extra credit problem. You had to figure out what the density is. You did, you did a good job figuring out what the density was. I was boat. so confused on that. You did it right. You did it right to a point. All you had to do is keep on adding pennies in there until you got the weight to increase over. I think it was, I wanna say it was something like 12 grams per 40 milliliters was the, uh, was the boat. Okay, I think that's what the density of the boat was. You just had to keep on adding pennies until the weight of the pennies uh, increased more than the uh, uh, than the milliliters. Okay, I was so all. confused on that. <laughs> you got you got six of the eight points. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Let me see where I'm at. I'm really distracted. There's like this giant bird. Like it's like right here. It's crazy. This giant bird? Yeah, it's like it's humongous. I don't it's and it's just like hanging out. It's really okay. weird. Are you hearing that or not? No, I can't hear anything. No. One second. Dude, it's like a dinosaur. This is, this is going to show you some chemical reactions. It's a cool video. And I am going to turn it down a bit.
This is Kohler. We're going to do a double replacement reaction with potassium chromate and silver nitrate. Here's my potassium chromate, and I see that when I add silver nitrate to it, I am forming a nice red precipitate. And the precipitate is silver chromate. It's a double replacement reaction. One of the, it is water bottles. So that's what this is, a water bottle. You're a big, strong man. I want you just to push on the sides there and see if that bottle will crush. Oh, no. It's hard, isn't it? I right? mean, I'm, 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 you know. You're there. I'm pretty I muscular, tell. but not even I am going to be there, crushing there that you go. guy. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to let air do this for us. So put on your safety glasses Ooh. because you. you get to now deal with not only fire, but a flammable liquid. Simple. So we say don't fire. try this at home, all right? So I have a flammable liquid here. It's actually ethanol. Another suit and that goes down inside. the hole. Nah, it's fine. You've gotten a <laughs> refund on a lot of them. Oh, now watch what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this around so that we can get it to evaporate inside. So in just a second here, we're going to light this on fire. We're going to create some heat that's inside. And as soon as that heat is inside, it's going to push all those air molecules out. And then we're going to make a kind of a one-way valve. I'm going to put my hand on top of it like this. And we're going to see whether or not the air pushing around us, you can see the effects on this bottle. Collapse it. Okay. Fair enough? Fair all enough. All right, so here we go. So uh, a little match here. Do you want to hear? You do the honors. Oh, Ready? Okay. So you're just going to kind of drop it down right, inside. You can put your hand on yeah, it. Right? Yeah, I, I just kind of drop, drop it down it. inside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Hear that? Oh, oh, oh. Now watch. I'm going to cover. Watch. Go for it. Six. Look at this. You're actually crushing the bottle. Now, I'm not doing that. Look, the air all around us is crushing the bottle. Listen to this. Listen. Isn't that amazing? So that it's that air pushing cool. around it. Now we get a double I'm not kidding. That's, 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 that's a strong bottle. Very rigid it? plastic. Yeah. Now, look. Watch this. Because we had combustion inside this whoosh bottle, so to speak, what we're left with now is water. So when we pour this out here, this is, is the, the moisture. Is the byproduct of the uh, combustion? It's is exactly. Water? It's carbon dioxide and water.
all of these word equations, you are going to be able to be complete once we get through this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I got one more little thing I want to get through with nomenclature, and then we're going to get on to chemical reactions. This stuff is going to go on. The stuff is going to go on and build off of one another. So if we have a binary acid, I just got to the stuff at the very end of the period last Thursday. When we have an acid, the cation will always be hydrogen. It's what makes up the other half of it that tells you what kind of acid it is and how you name it. So if we have a binary acid, that means it's hydrogen just linked with another non-metal uh, atom. Hydrogen with chlorine, hydrogen with bromine, hydrogen with sulfur. The way we name these, First part of the name is a hydro. Second part, you go for the root of the, of the element. If it's stuck with fluorine, then it would be fluor. If it's with chlorine, it would be chlor. Then we add IC and the word acid. So that if we have something like HCl, first part is hydro, first syllable, the other element is chlor, Add an IC, hydrochloric, add the word acid. If we have something like H2S, well, we, it's hydrosulfic acid, doesn't kind of flow off the tongue. So we have to add another little syllable in there, and this becomes hydrosulfuric acid. There aren't a whole lot of these guys. The binary acids, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, even oxygen, we don't name as an acid. H2O is not an acid. So we don't have to worry about oxygen. Sulfur, selenium, we don't have to worry about nitrogen. Phosphorus, yes. So how many is that? Seven. There are only seven binary acids. Questions on how to name these guys. Hydrobromic acid, Hunter. What's the formula? Give me just one moment. Nila, Nila with an N. Nila. Yes. Hydrobromic acid. This is an acid. So you know the cation is going to be an H. Right. Bromic, bromic. What's what element does bromic sound like? Bromine. So what's the formula for hydrobromic acid? HBr. There we go. Jennifer, hydrophosphoric acid. Can you hear me? John, uh, Jennifer. Yeah, can you hear me? Kind of, sort of, in a uh, in a helium kind of way. Yeah. Okay, you said hydrophosphoric. No, I can't hear you, Jennifer. We'll talk to somebody else. Hunter, you back? Yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry. My computer has just been weird the last couple of days. Um, sometimes it crashes. No uh, problem, if, Hunter. If I'm in, if I'm in uh, uh, Zoom with like a bunch of people, I think Hunter, it's okay. Hunter, we got to get going, okay? Yeah, Hunter, hydro, hydro, yeah I think it would be HPH. Phos phosphorus. Which column, which, phosphor, which column is phosphorus in? It's in 15. All right, right below nitrogen, right? Yeah. What did I tell you to put the charge on nitrogen? Negative three. So how many hydrogens do I need? Three. H3P. H3P, yeah. All right. All right. Now, the other kind of acids we're going to deal with, there's things called oxy acids. These are acids having... An anion with oxygen. They're polyatomic anions. And as I said the other day, there are a couple of mnemonics that will help you. 
I ate it and it was icky. If the polyatomic ends in ATE, you take away the ATE and put in IC. So if I have SO4, this is sulfate. I drop the ATE and I add IC. Again, sulfic doesn't sound good. So you add another syllable, sulfuric. HNO3, nitrate. Drop the ATE, add IC. Nitric. Uh, let's see who else is out here. Uh, Spencer, you're out there, Spencer. Yes. All right. HC2H3O2. C2H3O2 is acetate. So what would the acid that's associated with that be? Uh, the polyatomic is called acetate. Okay. So what am I telling you to do with oxy acids? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's fine. I don't know. It's a perfectly good answer. Uh, let's go with uh, Marie. Marie, you here tonight? Yes, I'm here. Marie. Yes. If you have something, HC2H3O2, the polynomial C2H3O2 is acetate. So how do you name that? Okay, Marie, look on the screen. It says that the anion ends in A-T-E, change it to I-C and add the word acid. Acetate, take away A-T-E, Marie. Are we supposed to be following a slideshow right now? Uh, yeah, are we supposed to be seeing something? Yeah, yeah. I just see everyone's faces. Same, I don't see a screenshot. How about that now? Yes. A. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Marie, yes. if the anion name ends in A-T-E, change it to I-C, change the A-T-E to I-C and add the word acid. So acetate. Uh, I don't know, it's perfectly acetic, good. Acetic. I'm sorry? Acetic. Acetic, yes, acetic. Yes, acidic. All right. The other one that we have to worry about is if the anion ends in ITE, you change it to OUS. I took a bite and it was delicious. So if I have NO2, NO2 is nitrite. NO2 is nitrite. Take away the AT, the ITE, add OUS. I make nitrous acid. Are you following with me, guys? Yes. 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 Okay. HClO4. HClO4 is. ClO4 is perchlorate. So how do you call HClO4? Perchloric acid. Perchloric acid. Simple as that. So if I have chloric acid, if I have chloric acid, what is the anion that's associated with it? I ate it, it was icky. So if it was an eight, it went to an IC, going backwards. If you have an IC, what does the polynomial end in? Eight. Eight. So you have chloric turns into what? Chlorate. Chlorate, which is ClO3. 
The formula would then be HClO3. Bromus acid, the OUS. What does that change to when we're looking at the bromite. polyatomic? Bromite. Bromite, BrO2. So the formula for bromous acid is HBrO2. Again, guys, I can't emphasize enough. I don't care what you use to practice. The, uh, uh, the survivor guide has an excellent choice. I've provided you with homework, extra homework. The more you do this stuff, the more you're gonna get better. And the more you're better at this, the quicker it's gonna go in the test and you can spend your time on things you have to concentrate on. Any questions on nomenclature before we go on to reactions? On the test, is it gonna be a, a multiple choice or no? Probably will. Okay. Probably will be multiple choice. Okay. Professor, just a quick question. For nitrous acid, you said NO2, or did you say HNO2? For all acids will have H, right? Okay, all acids still have H. So that's going to be what the cation is going to be, Rosina. Okay? Okay, thank you. You got to look and see nitrous. The us goes to ITE. You got to look up nitrite then. Does that make sense, Rosina? The nitrate polyatomic is NO2. That still has a minus sign. You still have to add an H to make it a neutral molecule. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Professor, just a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, in the uh, Pearson guide, uh, they are referencing a table which I didn't find in the survival guide. So is there some other place where we can get a are picture of that table? Are you talking about the polyatomic table? No, not that one. I'm talking okay. about uh, this table, the flow chart. The flow chart. Yeah, the nomenclature using flow chart. Uh, I've been using a flow chart the whole time, Roxina. That's what I'm doing when I'm doing questions. Right, okay. You know? So uh, tell me, I'll tell you what, stay a little bit afterwards and I will try and find it. They're probably referencing, if it's Pearson, they're referencing the TRO text. Okay. So, All right. Thank you. Everybody see the slideshow up here? Yes. You good? Yep. Yes. Wait, could you put the slideshow in full screen? Just as yeah, I, that's good. Yeah. Just as you ask. I'm here to please you. All right. When we're dealing with parts of a chemical equation, the reactants are the substances that are undergoing the change. The products are the substances that form from the result of the change. So as a general rule, as a, I'm looking for a word and I can't find it. Um, uh, as a, condi not condition. Ah, I can't find it word. What's that? Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb, okay. For lack of a better one, the rule of thumb. Reactants are gonna go on the left side of an arrow. Products go on the right side. And in effect, that arrow, put in your mind, that arrow means an equal sign because reactants left of the arrow, products right of the arrow, the arrow means an equal sign. What that means is because of Lavoisier, matter is not destroyed nor it's created. That means that when we look at a chemical equation, the atoms on the left side of the arrow have to add up to the atoms on the right side. We don't create or destroy matter by chemical means. 
So first step, first thing we're gonna talk about are balancing chemical equations. Step one, all the individual chemicals must be balanced electronically. All the atoms, all the, all the compounds must be neutral. So there cannot be any charges on the molecules. Chemicals, you balance with subscripts. Note, guys, you do not change the subscripts when you're balancing equations. If you change the subscript, you've changed the molecule. So once you have balanced all the chemicals, do not play with the subscripts again. It's in stone at that point. Note, Subscripts do not automatically get carried from one side of the equation to the other. So once you have, once you have balanced the chemical, don't change the subscript. Second thing, you do not carry subscripts from the left side of the equation to the right. Chemicals are balanced with subscripts. Equations are balanced with coefficients. They are the big numbers in front of the molecules. If no number is in front of the molecule, consider it to be one. If no subscript is there in the molecule, assume it's one. The number of atoms is the product of the coefficient times the subscript. We did this when we were counting atoms. You remember that guys? We're dealing with the multiplication of the coefficient times the subscript. That will tell you how many atoms are present. Rules. Balance the cations, except for hydrogen. Balance the anions, except for oxygen. If you have a polyatomic ion and it doesn't change from left to right, if you have SO4 on the left and you have SO4 on the right, it hasn't changed. Treat it as a unit. Next, balance the H's, then balance the O's, recheck. Guys, I do not care that you use these rules. You don't have to balance the cations first. You can start with the anions if you like. I don't care that you use these rules in this order. What I care about is for you to do it in a nice orderly fashion. If you do it in an orderly fashion, you're not gonna make mistakes. Polyatomics. Polyatomics with parentheses mean that there are more than one. Polyatomics with no parentheses means that there is only one of that entire polyatomic. We have an equation, H2SO4 plus NaOH yields water and Na2SO4. The compounds on the right are balanced. So all we have to do is go and balance the chemical equation. If I'm looking at this, I see one coefficient times one subscript. There is one Na on the left. On the right, one coefficient times two subscript. I have two on the right. So I have to fix it. The only way I can fix it is by putting coefficients. And you have to realize when I put coefficients, I have to multiply them by the subscripts. So I have two on the left, or two on the right. I want to make two on the left. My subscript is one. What does my coefficient have to be? Two. Two, okay. You don't, remember, we're not adding. We are bound, we're multiplying subscripts by a coefficient. So we're gonna have to put a two in front of my sodium hydroxide, just like that. Now, I said balance cations except except hydrogen. Hydrogen's the only other cation here. So I'm gonna leave that alone for a second. 
All right. I have SO4. Okay, no parentheses. There's one of them on the right. One of them times one coefficient, one on the one on the right. There's one on the left. Are my SO4s balanced? Yes. Okay. Now, next rule. Balance the hydrogens. For my sulfuric acid, I have a coefficient of one times two. I have two hydrogens coming from sulfuric acid. I have in my sodium hydroxide now a coefficient of two times the subscript one. I have two coming from my NaOH. Two plus two, I have four hydrogens on my left. What do we have to put in front of the water to make it have four hydrogens? A two. A two. So there we are right now. Now, we have to look at our oxygens. That's the last thing we have to look at. Remember, we've already taken care of these because these four oxygens are balanced by these four oxygens. We kept the polyatomics on left and right. They stayed the same. We treated them as units. So don't worry about those oxygens. I now, for my sodium hydroxide, have two coefficient times one subscript, two O's. On my right, I have two coefficient times one subscript, two on my right. They are balanced. My entire chemical equation is now balanced. If I go and check them, two times one sodiums on the left, one times two sodiums on the right, Two and two, we're good. SO4s, one times one, one times one. I have one sulfate, both sides, we're good. For my sulfuric acid, I have one coefficient times two subscript, two hydrogens coming there. For my sodium hydroxide, two coefficient times one subscript, so I have two plus two, I have four hydrogens on my left. On my right, I have a two coefficient times a two subscript. I have four on the right. My oxygens, two coefficient times one subscript from my sodium hydroxide, two oxygens on the left, two coefficient times one subscript from water, two on the right. I am balanced. Questions about that, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I did it in a nice orderly fashion. Okay, I have my second, my second reaction we're gonna do. Okay, Hayden, how many aluminums do we have on the left? Um, on the left, there's only one. One coefficient times one subscript, there's only one. How many are on the right? On the right, there's two. One coefficient times two subscript. So Hayden, how are you going to fix this? Um, you have to add um, a coefficient of two on the left. Very good, okay. Curtis. Could you also do a subscript of two? No, 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 never, 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 ever. Did I react sufficiently volatile? Yes. If okay. you change, yeah. <laughs> Hayden, never. Once all the compounds are balanced, once all the compounds are neutral, never futz with the subscripts again. That's the first thing you do is you neutralize all the chemicals. Okay, Hayden? Once they're neutralized, you leave them alone because if you change the subscripts, you've changed the chemicals, okay? All right, Cut back to you, Curtis. Yes, sir. How many sodiums do I have on the left? Um, What's the coefficient in front of two. the compound with sodium? 
two. Well, the coefficient was one, but you multiply by that subscript. So there are two sodiums on the left. How many are on the right? Uh, just one. one. So, Curtis, how do I get the sodiums equal? We have to add a two coefficient to the sodium on the right. There we go. Absolutely, exactly what we need to do. All right, Mariah. Mariah? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, can you tell me how many chlorines are on the left? Six. How many are on the right? Two. So how are we going to fix it? Well, I had this whole in a different way, so hold on. Couldn't you just like make the put six for the NaCl? Yeah, you could turn the two into a six in the NaCl. And then just do a three for the other and it all equal. Well, no, you've got, you've got, you're changing this two to a six. So now we have six coefficient times the number one subscript. So six chlorines, we have two times three on this side. So we have six. No, okay. I get that. I meant like if you put a three in front of the Na2O as well. Well, look at the last element we have to deal with. Mariah, how many oxygens are on the right? Three. How many are on the left? One. Fix it. You, you just put a, go ahead. Put a three in front of the Na2O. I now have two aluminums, two aluminums, three times two, six. Ooh, that's wrong. This should be a six NaCl. Six sodiums, with this being a six, six times one, six sodiums, two times three, six chlorines, six times one, six chlorines, and three times one, one times three, we are balanced. Professor, you just qualified for an extra credit. I, what, myself, did I caught my own error? <laughs> Rosina, if I caught as many, if I recorded every error I caught myself in. Okay. We're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing lots more balancing, but does it seem that difficult? Not yet. It's no. not too bad. Not yet. No. not yet. Do it. Do it in that orderly fashion. It will not seem bad at all. Sorry, I got out of the slideshow. All right, the first reaction we're going to be dealing with is something called a double replacement reaction. It can be called a double displacement reaction. They are synonymous. It is the same basic thing. So first thing, I want you to learn how to recognize the types of reactions you're dealing with. First step is recognize what the reaction is. That recognition will tell you what the products are. So the first step, if you look at a reaction, and you see the reactants consist of two ionic compounds. Two ionic compounds mean to you double replacement reaction. All right, guys, we're gonna get into the swinging Flintstones. Who all knows the Flintstones? And I'm not talking about Bam Bam and Pebbles because I'm not sick like that. We're talking about the swinging Flintstones. Anybody know what a key party is? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Hunter, do you know what a key party uh, is? Yeah. Okay, can you explain it? Well, if you live in Florida, you should know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a key party. We have 
couples that come to a house, okay? The couples come into the house and the man throws his keys into a jar. All the women are then blindfolded and they stick their hands in and whoever's keys they grab, that's the husband that they go with. Okay, we have Fred and Wilma and Barney and Betty. They're going to a swingers party. And lo and behold, Fred ends up with Betty and Barney ends up with Wilma. <laughs> what is happening here? The same thing. You don't think that chemicals like to swing? Chemicals love swinging. It's what they live for, okay? <laughs> so, when we're looking at a double displacement reaction, the first cation mates up with the second anion. The second cation mates up with the first anion. So, if I have sodium chloride, an ionic compound, and I mix it with lead nitrate, another ionic compound. My first cation, sodium, hooks up with NO3 so that we make a new compound, NaNO3. All right. My second cation, lead, hooks up with my first anion, chlorine. So I just put the lead and the chlorine together. At first, guys, all I want you to do is put the correct ions together. Do not worry about subscripts yet. Just know that the first cation hooks up with the second anion, and the second cation hooks up with the first anion. Now, that's what ultimately happens in a successful double replacement reaction. Let's figure out what happens when ionic compounds exist in water. If I have something like sodium chlorides, the sodiums are the purple ones, the chlorines are the green ones. What happens is there is a positive end. The hydrogens of water are positive, the oxygen is negative. This is because it is a polar molecule. The electrons spend more time around oxygen than the hydrogen. So therefore, water is a charged molecule. So what happens is this little water comes in here and it kind of pushes its way in and it grabs that sodium. The oxygen attaches to the sodium and literally more waters come around and that sodium is completely surrounded. The chlorines, the hydrogen end goes towards the chlorine because we've got positive hydrogens, negative chlorines, and the waters completely surround it. This is the process called ionization. If you put salt in water, this is what happens. This is why water dissolves, or Water, salt dissolves in water. Do I have you so far, guys? Yes. Okay. Now. Wait, wait, wait. When salt dissolves in water, it's ionizing? Yes. Yes. It's separating, Hunter, it's separating NaCl together. Okay? When it's in water, the sodium separates as Na+. Plus, the chlorine separates as Cl minus. It becomes ionized. So if I have a reaction in which I can see something happening, if I have compound ionic compound AB, that mixes with, with uh, ionic compound CD. Now, what happens when A and D get together? When A and D get together, they make a compound that water can't break up. If water can't break it up, it is a solid. 
And the other thing that forms was the second cation reacts with the first CB. That is aqueous. I have made something. I have made a solid. It is not like it was before. I have had a reaction. All right. What is really happening? My ions are forming. My A reacts with D to make something that is not soluble in water. The right side is different from the left side of my equation. I'm getting a reaction to occur. If I put sodium chloride, sodium chloride, I've got sodium ions and chloride ions, and on my other beaker, I have silver ions and nitrate, NO3 ions. I pour the sodium nitrate solution into the sodium chloride. The silver reacts with the chlorine to make an insoluble silver chloride. The sodiums and the nitrates still float around in solution as the ions. I am not sure this is going to work, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's try this and show. Can you see this? The free TurboTax live tax expert. Why do you need a tax? No, sir. Uh, I can no, do it. It's still on the PowerPoint. No. Okay, no problem. Skip bad. And Silver under, nitrate. Oh, relax, relax. Silver okay. nitrate is added to a sodium chloride solution, forming a precipitate of so silver chloride. So what is happening? The sodium, the silver is reacting with the chlorine to make an insoluble As ammonia compound. is added, the silver chloride dissolves. So when we add the sodium, the silver and the chloride together, I have now made a new property. The new property is the sodium chloride doesn't dissolve in water, whereas the other compounds did dissolve in water. I had a chemical reaction. Does that make sense, guys? Make sense? Can I see that again, sir? Maybe not. All righty then. Who's that? Are you the actually making me do this again? Expert. Why do you need a tax expert? His advice is free. I mean, I just asked. Silver yeah, nitrate follow it. added to a sodium chloride solution, forming a precipitate of silver chloride. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. The other part is something that uh, they're adding more chemicals and dissolving it back up again. Oh, okay. but that's the cool part. Oh, you want to see the cool part? Yes. You add, if you add ammonia to this, it will re-dissolve everything. As ammonia is added, the silver chloride dissolves. And actually what it also does is it makes a purple, I'm sorry, a blue solution which you can't see because of the blue background. Play. Why isn't this playing? Ooh. You know, at this point, if you don't want the next video to play, you can just hit cancel right underneath the little spinny wheel. And then Where? it'll stop the video. Where? You just missed it. Like if you go back on to the previous video, and then like, I'm just, not going to show this again. I was going to say, no but when you, how many times Terry wants to see it? Right at the very end, when it's like doing the spinning wheel to go on to the next video, you can just hit the word cancel. It's right underneath it. All right. Uh, I will try and look for that. Okay. Now, what happens if all these things, when I put A and D together, that makes something that dissolves in water and C and B also dissolves in water. When I do something like that, I have A plus plus B minus from the AB. I have C plus and D minus from the CD. 
but I also have A plus and AD, which on the right side, and I have the B minus and C plus. I haven't changed anything. Right now, all I have is a bunch of ions floating around in solution. So when I'm looking at a chemical reaction and I see these aqueouses there, this means that nothing has happened. We have to have evidence of a reaction occurring in order to continue this process. If we have no evidence, then all we have to do is say no reaction and we are done. If everything stays in ionic form from left to right, if we make no solids, then there's no change and hence no reaction. Remember, we're looking for a change in the properties. If we get a change in color, remember, a change in a property probably means a chemical change. If we get evolution of a gas, remember, a change in property probably means a chemical change. We're not going to get into, we're not going to get into, um, uh, electron changings of electrons. We won't get into that. That's something that you have to wait for. For this one's really cool. Stop it. If we we've got iron three nitrate on the right hand side here and on the left hand side we've got potassium thiocyanate if we push the crystals into the water they should start to dissolve There's the iron and now for the potassium thiocyanate and quite a dramatic reaction, of course, where they meet. Basically, we're taking iron uh, nitrate and we're reacting it with potassium thiocyanate. Both crystals were colorless. Both crystals were colorless. When we put them together, it made a red color. We have evidence of a reaction occurring. Therefore, the reaction proceeds. Okay, I gotta get rid of this. Stop share. I gotta go to this. Okay. Are we seeing the screen? Double replacement reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Solid material. In the double displacement reaction of a metal sulfite with an acid, we'll start out with white sodium sulfite and add an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid. So we have white powder and we and have a clear liquid. To form sulfurous acid and sodium chloride. The sulfurous acid is not stable and decomposes to form water and sulfur dioxide. The sulfur so, dioxide escapes from the solution. We can test for the formation. So basically what has happened? We had a white powder and we had a clear liquid. We mixed them together. We got all kinds of bubbles. We had a gas evolving. We had evidence of a chemical reaction. So when we're dealing with Double replacement reactions, they are also called 
precipitation reactions. This is because when you mix two ionic compounds together, more often than not, you get a creation of a compound that doesn't dissolve in water anymore. So how do you know if a solid forms? How do you know if we have a reaction? There's something called the solubility chart. And we have the anions listed on the horizontal. We're listing the cations on the vertical. And in order to determine whether or not your products form a solid or are aqueous, you need to put your right finger on the anion, your left finger on the cation. So if you put your right finger on hydroxide and you take it down, you put your left finger on iron three. If you look, they meet in a box that's labeled with an S. S means a solid forms. If I do copper two and fluoride, take my fluoride down to where copper two is, that is aqueous. If I happen to form that compound, that would exist as ions in solution. Are you, understand? Are you understanding how a solubility chart works? We good with that? Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Aqueous, AQ means both the cation and anion exist in ionic form in solution. I means it's insoluble or S means it's insoluble. They've reacted to form a solid. D means it decomposes, something other than changing into a cation or an anion occurred. So again, first step in balancing chemical equations, we need to balance the individual molecules with subscripts. We balance the equation with coefficients. Balance the cations except H. Balance the anions except O. Polyatomics that don't change from one side to the other can be treated as a unit. Then balance the H's, then balance the O's, recheck. So we're gonna go through these, all right? I want you to predict the products. Do not put in the subscripts. Uh, Rosina, you're out there. Rosina? Yes. If I mix, again, recognition, sodium chloride is an ionic compound, lead nitrate is an ionic compound. So, if I mix these, predict mm -hmm. the products. So NA, NO3, and... Good, you just PLPB. link them. And what? What was the second one, Rosina? CLPB, uh, chlorine. No, 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 no. No, okay. Cations always get listed first. Okay, so PBCL. PBCL. Guys, do you notice she did not, did not carry over the subscripts? I don't want you to do that yet. So we have sodium nitrate. I look over here at sodium. I look over at nitrate. Oh, aqueous. we're good, guys. It's aqueous. Remember, if you don't, if you, everything is aqueous, you have no reaction. You don't have to do anything more. So I'm going to look at my lead. Lead and chlorine. Solid. I have to go on. If I have a solid forming, that means that I have a reaction. If I had two aqueous ionic compounds formed, there would be no reaction. I could stop it at that point. If I get a solid, I have to continue on. So I have to figure out what is happening, okay? I've made PBCL and I've made NaNO3. Elizabeth. Yes. Okay, do you know what the charge on sodium is? 
No, I don't have my periodic table with me today. Who has a periodic? Guys, bring your periodic table each and every day. Mila, do you have a periodic table with you? One second. I'm sorry. My son's getting in trouble. No Take problem. Me. Armethia, do you have a periodic table? Yes. Okay. Sodium. Is it in the first column, Armethia? Yes, it's a plus one charge. Plus one. Do you happen to know what the charge on NO3 is? No, three is oh, plus one, um, a negative one charge. Negative one. So if I have sodium that's a plus one and I have NO3 that's a minus one, are they balanced? Yeah. Don't have to worry about that one. All right. Now I have PBCL. PV is a type two, so we don't know what its charge is. Okay. I'm making this statement right now. As far as you are concerned, the charge on the left for type two metals will not change on the right. Sometimes they will do that in chemical reactions, but for our purposes, they will not change left to right. So Armethia just said that NO3 was a negative one. What's the charge that my lead has to be? Plus one. Minus one. How many NO3s do I have? Oh. Three. Six. Not three. Six. 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 No. No. Two. 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 Thank you, Armethia. Oh, how many Remember, NO3s? guys, the entire polyatomic is the NO3. So you do not multiply the two by the three. You do not say that you have three NO3s because you need that nitrogen and those three oxygens to make up nitrate. So I have two NO3s. Each one of them is a minus one charge. What is the charge on my lead? Plus two. plus two. Okay, so if lead on the right side is a plus two, how many chlorines do we have to have? Chlorines are a minus one, guys. Two. Two. So my sodium and my nitrate are fine because my sodium was a plus one, my nitrate was a minus one. I used my lead nitrate to determine that my lead was a plus two charge. I told you it's not gonna change from left to right. So my lead was a plus two charge. Each chlorine is minus one. So I had to have two of them. I've done my first step. My molecules are balanced. All right. Now, Armitha, you're doing so well. How many leads do I have on the left side? I think she's quit while she's ahead. One. Thank you. How many do we have on the right? Two. No. The two is modifying the chlorine, not the lead. Oh, one. One. So I have one lead on each side. Okay, Armethia, how about my sodiums? One on each side. One on each side. So my cations are balanced. All right, Terry. Yep. What about my chlorines? How many chlorines do I have on the left? One. On the right? Two. So how do I fix it? Uh, change your coefficient to two on the left. Okay. Are you seeing that? I'm not, I, I've got your pictures in the middle here. Are you seeing me? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, Terry, how do I fix my nitrates? Or are they okay now? Um, they are okay. So I have two NaCl's plus lead NO3 taken twice yields PbCl2 plus two NaNO3's. Everything is balanced. How are we doing for time, guys? Uh, We're 6.34. 6 oh, good, good, good. We have 
plenty of time to do more of these. BACL2 plus K2SO4. What I want you to do is I want you to predict the products. Do not add the subscripts. Hayden. Yes. BACL2, ionic compound, potassium sulfate, ionic compound. Two ionic compounds, this is a double replacement reaction. Predict the products. Um, it'll be BA and then K2. Nope, you have put a cation with another cation. You need to put the first cation, the barium, with the anion. So it'll be BASO4 and then yeah. UCL2. What did you, I'm sorry, Hayden, what did you say? Should be BASO4. Yep, that's good. And? Um, KCL. KCL. Again, I don't want you putting subscripts in there. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's go with, I have a, go ahead, ask me a question. I have a quick question. So because SO4 is like it's, it's already a, a, a compound. You, you it's bring that compound. subscript. Well, it, a... you, you still bring that subscript over then, right? Cause it's. Yes. The, okay. That subscript is part of the polyatomic. Okay. So if it's a polyatomic like that, you can keep the subs like NO3. Yes. You can keep the subscript. Okay. If it's part of a polyatomic, yes. Those subscripts do get carried over. What I'm talking about is when you have a polyatomic, I don't want you to put parentheses and add subscripts after that, okay? Oh, okay, yeah. P Professor, I have a question. Yes, Kate. So it's KCL because you subtracted the two from the K and the two from no, the C. No, 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 I am not subtracting anything. Remember, Kate, I told you, predict the products, don't add subscripts yet, okay? Trust me, Gaith, don't add the subscripts. We're gonna do the subscripts in a second, okay? Oh, okay. Now we have barium sulfate and we have potassium chloride. And I gotta take this back, okay? Barium sulfate, can somebody tell me whether that is a solid or aqueous? It's a solid. Did we have a reaction? Yes. Yes. So we get back to my compound. I have my reaction. So I've got to, I, I've got a reaction. So therefore I have to do the rest of this. All right. Um, Aaron, you out there, Aaron? Yes, I'm out here. Yes, you're not here? No, I'm out here. I'm here. <laughs> Okay. All right, Aaron. Barium, BA. Mm -hmm. Do you know what charge is on barium? Um, it's a plus two. Plus right? two. Okay. okay. What about sulfate, SO4? Do you know what the charge on that is? Uh, no. <laughs> All right, guys. You want to know how to cheat? This is called legal cheating, all right? Let's look over here. Do we know what the charge on potassium is? Come on, what's the charge on potassium? Uh, plus one. How many of them do we have? Two. Two. Okay, so if we have two plus ones and we know this molecule is neutral, what does the charge on the sulfate have to be? Two. Two. Negative two. Okay. That's how you cheat. That's how you cheat on top. This is why I never, I swear to you, I never memorize any of these things because I always figured that I could figure it out on the test. In any case, so now we have barium plus two. We have SO4 two minus. Is it balanced? Yes. All right, now, what's the charge on potassium? We said a second ago it was a plus one. 
What about Corey? Mine's two. Minus, minus two? One. Minus one. Oh, minus one, yeah. Minus one. So we have potassium at plus one, chlorine at a minus one. Is that balanced? Yes. Yes. So I have got my balance, my products are balanced. I got one barium right, one barium left. We're good. I got one coefficient times two subscript on the left for potassium. I got one times one on the right. How am I gonna fix this, guys? Add a two coefficient on the right. On the right. On the right. Somebody said left, I thought, thought I heard. Okay. Now, how many sulfates do I have on the left and how many sulfates do I have on the right? SO4s. One of each. One of each. One of each. Are they balanced? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's look at my chlorines. How many do I have on the left? Two. Two. How many do I have on the right? One. One. Well, two. you have two now. I have two now because yeah. I have a coefficient times a subscript. I am balanced. Do I have time for one more, guys? You have five minutes. minutes. Yeah, you got five. I have five more minutes. Now, Gaith, let me yes. let me go back. Gaith. Yes. Remember when I told you I did not want you. I told you don't add subscripts, right? I told you that, Gaith. Do you remember that? Yes. If you would have kept the subscripts, you'd have made K2Cl2 which is a different molecule than KCl. Do you understand, Gaith? Yes. You don't carry subscripts over. You first figure out whether you've got a reaction going. Then once you figured you have a reaction, then you balance each of the compounds individually. So the two did not get transferred over here. This two did not get transferred over there. Eventually, it got balanced by putting a coefficient of two in front of the molecule. Predict the products. So hey, this Kaylin. I haven't heard from you, Kaylin. Hello. Kaylin, by the way, I'm sorry for the confusing email. That's OK. I was actually needed to talk to Katie. I figured it out. Kaylin, Hi. what are my products going to be? Um, CUNO3 and CLA, oh, sorry, AGCL. Look, all right. I'm going to end the show, go back. Okay. So we have copper. We have AGCL and we have copper nitrate. Was that the other one? I don't remember. Uh, you're going to make me look back at that? <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, OK. Yeah, it was AGNO3. OK, the products we form are AGCL and CUNO3 taken twice. Copper 2 nitrate. Is that going to be a solid? No. No. How about my silver chloride? Yes. All right, I just want you to look at a couple of things here while we're on the solubility chart. Do you see the nitrates, guys? Yeah. So pretty much, if you have a compound with nitrate in it, it's going to be soluble. Let's look at the sodiums. If you have something with sodium in it, it's pretty much going to be soluble. 
potassium the same way. So we have silver chloride, that's a solid. All right. Did I do that balance? I balanced the whole thing crap. What other products have formed? AGCL, right? What's the charge on silver? Uh, 1 positive. 1 positive. Somebody remembered it was one of the four extra ones. Silver is a positive 1. What about CL? Minus 1. So, AGCL. What is the charge on my copper here? Plus two. Plus two. How about my nitrate? Plus one. Minus one. Minus one, sorry. So my compound would be CuNO3 parentheses taken twice. Okay. Uh, let me futz this. Okay. How many CUs do I have on both sides? On either side? One. How many AGs do I have on either side? One. We're good. How many CLs do I have on the left? Two. How many on the right? One. Fix it. Two AGCL. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting only a very few responses here. I understand you wanna be shy, I, I understand being shy, but you need to be answering these questions in your own head because this is the way it's going to be in the test. So I'm gonna put a two in front of AGCL. Now, what about my NO3s? One NO3 on the left, but two on the right. Fix it. Two AGNO3. Am I balanced now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to do, this is where I'm going to begin on Thursday. I'm going to review this with this particular reaction. And then we're going to go on to ionic and net ionic equations. Then we'll go from there to single replacement combustion and synthesis and acid bases and decomposition. Isn't this fun? No. Ooh, -hoo. Ooh -hoo. any questions, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? No. Does this, no, does this seem no. daunting? Yes. Guys, does this seem daunting? Yes. A little bit. No. Okay, I got a no and a couple yeses. All right, let me show you something before we leave. If I get out of here. And I get back into this. This extra homework assignment is very, very good. Reaction worksheet, click on that. Because what it does, it gives you, the first part is balancing chemical equations. Second part, you got to predict the products and balance them. Okay. At third part, you're going to have to do this. Does it have the answer sheet with it or you want us to turn it in? No, I don't, you don't have to turn it in. Okay. I'm telling you, this is there. Now, is there an answer sheet for us to check work though? Yes. Okay. Trust me on this right below it. right below it. 
answer reaction worksheet. Okay, Mila? Yes, I see that, thank you. Before we leave, can we go over what's due in, in the next uh, like week or two? Erg! Hunter, I give you a announcement every week <laughs> on Sunday. I email it to you. No, I know, I know, but I don't know. I just sometimes it changes. All right, you always have three discussion questions. Always, okay? I've been putting the dates that these discussion questions are due, okay? So you always have that. Hunter, you have a schedule. It's on the schedule as well. So yep. this week, you have a quiz eight. I know that. That is due on Thursday. The okay. homework was due today. Yep, got that done. That's all you had to do. Okay, it, but what about, um, you know, all right, yeah, all right. I just, I, you know, sometimes like I just seem like where it's like um, schedules and sometimes they're off and change the Next date. week, next Tuesday, you have quiz nine, homework five. Okay. Next Thursday, you have quiz 10. You have three discussions on Sunday. All right, so quiz nine and quiz, and quiz 10. Hunter, is Hunter, help yourself out here, okay? Go to All right. Got to read the syllabus, bro. Go to the course content. Uh, is it okay schedule. if we log out? What's that? Is it okay to log out? Yes, fine. Okay, have a nice night. See you Thursday. See you in the lab, Thursday. sir. Yeah, I'll see you. Bye. Hunter, do you see this? Yeah, I just, you know, because like a couple of the quizzes where it was like it didn't follow that. You know what I mean? So I just want to make absolutely There's sure. There's only been one. There's only been one that hasn't followed that. We're in my other classes. So I just want to be sure, you know. <laughs> so I'm getting blamed for your other no. classes. No, you're not. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Not that's where, Hunter, if you want to see what's going on in the future, just go up into table contents of your guide. Okay. It's not the first course schedule, it's the second one. Okay. I don't even know what this thing is. There's nothing there. All uh, right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What this does is this gives you the calendar. This will tell you what's due the next seven days, okay? Yeah. That's in the course schedule, the first course schedule. The second one is if you wanna see the future. Thank you. No problem. All right, I'll see you in the lab. I will see you in the lab. Anybody have anything else, guys? Yeah, I have a question. Who's, who's this? Zaina. Zaina, what's going on? So I submitted quiz eight and nine and 10 didn't show. And for number seven and eight, they were the same questions, but they had different answers. Okay, Zaina. <laughs> I'm going on as a student, okay? Okay. Are you seeing are you seeing this right now where it says assignment week of yes. Whatever you're seeing this, okay? So I'm gonna go into course content right now. I'm gonna go down to the quizzes. And I'm gonna go down to Okay, where are you accessing quiz? Where um, are you I accessing it, this? I see it on the everything that to do. I just click on it and it takes me right oh, to you're on, quiz on course schedule? Yeah. Okay, I think I know what's happened. No, I think I know what's happened. Uh, there's somebody else in here. Who else is in here besides Zaina and me? Kaylin, I'm just hanging out. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I am going to do one thing though, Zaina, okay? Okay. Uh, I can stop share. <laughs>